In this session, we wanted to focus on the benefits of having a PDM system. I hope this session is going to give you some insights to companies that are looking at a PDM system and what it has to offer. My name is Niels Persson and I'm part of our customer success team. And in this role, I engage in a lot of the dialogues with customers, sometimes prior to us even having a project in place. And in early discussions about PDM, I like to map out the different sources of information and the processes that work in between them. And this picture is a good general example of what this can look like. This map is often shaped by years and years of demands of information sharing in between system, departments, and people. This is quite a vulnerable environment. There is commonly no master system that owns any data, causing several copies to cir circulate the company, making it hard to overlook what data actually is the latest. What version are we working on? which version is released and ready for production, this ability is really hard. Data commonly needs to be converted to different formats for all departments to be able to consume it. It's often a manual process to convert and distribute this internally. A time-consuming job that steals focus from the actual work. If the original data is updated, this is in no way reflected on any way to the converted copies making it old the second it's created. Traceability is also hard in environments like this. What was sent to who and when? The answer to that is that often needs several people's involvement, digging through emails and comparing files. The companies we meet are often though very solution oriented and smart. Employees often have skills in programming and it's not uncommon that there are several in-house solutions or clever scripts that automate repeatable tasks and therefore have made their way into these workflows. Even though this saves some time, it's hard to maintain solutions like this. All of a sudden that employee that created this magical script moves on to another company and the knowledge on how to maintain or further develop that solution will get lost. In most cases, the customer is aware of these weaknesses and that it could be replaced by a more thought through solution, but it commonly works for now. Creating some structure to environments like this is one of the main objectives, I would say, for a PDM system, product data management. It aims to handle product information during the product's entire life cycle, creating a designated place for your product information offering all employees the correct information and by doing so eliminating non-value adding activities and improving on quality. So what type of content can we store then in a PDM system? Uh, commonly it's 3D models of both mechanical and electronic components and the related 2D, 3D drawings for those. They often come with a lot of metadata that relates to these components and drawings. Apart from the actual CAD files, there's a lot of documentation that describes uh, these components. And these could be in different types of formats. Word, Excel are very common. And also uh, different types of customer documentation, perhaps in some cases XML-based um, types of documents that are dynamically built together. Apart from this, very common today are different types of uh, um, source code and that could be stored as well, either as a zip file or the file itself. Uh, also images and video is possible to store for, for instance, marketing departments and so. So basically all types of content can be managed in, in a system like this. But most common, I would say, are 3D models and also its documentation. Storing any of these files in a system would give you some benefits right away. Every object has a unique 
numbering within the system. Together with the filing, the system can then make sure that we are all working on the same copies, consuming the same file so that copies are not created within the system. Any object will also be version controlled. So everything from a document to a, a CAD model that we put in here will get its version starting typically on, for instance, A1 and moving up as we save a new copy, we will iterate it until we revise it and go into, for instance, a B1. All objects within the system also has a life cycle and each version of each object has a state in that specific life cycle. This will give us a great overview of what we are currently working on and what is, for instance, released and can go into production or something we can source upon. Additional metadata that describes these objects can also be added. So, of course, you have, for instance, in your CAD environment, a lot of parameters that you want to push into the system that you want to make available for anyone browsing this environment. But there could be additional uh, metadata that you can place on these objects directly within the environment as well. With version and state, and since systems like this save every version of a model, we will get a great history and a possibility for traceability uh, with any changes that we make. So if we are in contact with a, um, an external party and we have sent files to them, we can easily go back and see what that specific version, what it looked like, what the metadata uh, was at that time, and pick up where we was, were then and perhaps comparing this to the version that we have currently in place and see any changes that were made in between these two versions, for instance. So anything you put in and iterate in a system like this will be saved. So you can at any time go back to see what it looks like um, in earlier versions and compare it to, to uh, the later versions. A true power of the PDM system is of course the searchability that it brings. Having a database that keeps track of all of this content and its metadata brings you powerful tools to find information quickly. It can aid in compiling large sets of information, for example, for external parties, also giving us a chance on creating reports or elaborated search queries. Show me all of the spare parts for this product. What modules are using this specific component? all parts that are to be manufactured from a certain material, for instance. What components or documents do we have that matches a certain classification? This is going to save a lot of time and help make sure you're looking at the latest accurate data. This is also giving a great possibility for reuse so if we can quickly search and establish what we have designed for. PDM will also bring visualization of your products to the whole enterprise. And this is used commonly extensively throughout a system like this. So as soon as you add uh, 3D content into the system, it's converted into a lightweight format that can be consumed directly within the system. So there is no need for the native application for consuming this uh, geometries. Users can then, for instance, measure or annotate directly on these models, and it becomes a great way of communicating your design through uh, the actual model. Uh, and this is then available for anyone using the PDM system. So out of the box, there are also some change and release processes in place. Uh, and these can be modified to your liking. Uh, this is a possibility to create a digital process for your release and change process. The people involved will get designated tasks that they can complete directly from in the browser. 
This is a great example when the visualization also come in handy. When reviewing or approving changes to, for example, a mechanical component, you can do so by viewing this lightweight model directly in your browser, creating dimensional analysis and annotating concerns or questions directly on the model. There are possibilities to create business rules also to automatically, um, the system will automatically validate that certain criteria are met prior to, to releasing this object or in this case, this mechanical component. And you can make these workflows very advanced if you like to with multi-authentication, electronic signatures, or you can keep them more simple. So they're quite flexible. But I believe the most important thing with something like this is that you, by using this, get a traceability of what was changed and why. So you can go back and see why we did these types of changes. Apart from this, you can also, if you go the more advanced road, perform mass updates on, on several objects. You can set effectivity or you can plan different types of supersedes, for instance. Together with the workflows, there are chances to automate a lot of processes. So during the workflows or during when we create and when the system creates these lightweight representations, documents can be converted into different types of formats. So if you, for instance, a sourcing department needs neutral file formats, they can be automatically converted by the system and they can be made available to this department directly from in and the system. Uh, usually this is something that is a manual task and that would steal time, for instance, from an R&D department. This can also involve water stamping of, of documents that you create. So depending on what state, for instance, that document has, it should be a water stamping that it's not ready for production or um, so there are different types of rules that you can create based on that. This can also be used to process and send data to other system or endpoints. Usually a PDM or a PLM environment lives closely related to an ERP system. And in certain cases, we perhaps want to push or receive information from that other system. So, when that workflow is passed and you, for instance, release information, that could be a great uh, opportunity to send information to an ERP system to also reflect that uh, decision on, on that system as well. It can also be used to notify users within the system and about these different types of automated processes that has been uh, performed. A big note is also security. So a system like this would have an authentication model and that could use uh, different types of access rights. So depending on who's logging into the system, uh, the system will give access to only the content that that person is allowed to see and consume. And it could be set on different levels that you're only allowed to view it you're allowed to edit or update this type of content. So this is a great way to protect your intellectual uh, property. There is also a natural backup, of course, of the production data. Working with a server side system like this will create a natural backup of all of your information. Usually uh, systems like this are also uh, creating a backup, uh, perhaps once every night and that you can always uh, go back to. But there is also a backup in itself that the system actually holds this information. So even if you're working on this on your own client computer, if it gets lost or uh, gets damaged, you can always download the latest version that you have on the server side as well. And products like this um, are developed by companies that have been in this um, business for, for decades. So um, 
and probably will continue to be so. So products will be supported and maintained over time. So to summarize the benefits that you have with product data management uh, would be that we have a, a possibility to control that objects are unique, that we are working on the same objects, that people are consuming the same information. All of the objects are version controlled. That goes from everything from your content files to files that are created during the workflow processes, for instance. Every object uh, will have a life cycle, and every version of that object will have a state in that life cycle. So we can easily trace what happened in between versions and what the changes are in between two specific versions. This gives us, since everything is saved, it gives us a full history and a possibility of traceability within that history. The system will give searchability, an easy way to, to search and find the data that you're looking for in a scattered environment where we have multiple systems or files in different places. And this is a tedious task just to, um, to find the information that we're actually looking for. Visualization to look at uh, especially geometry in this way and to consume it um, outside of the R&D department is quite powerful that we can discuss on a design uh, together and that you can annotate or take measurements directly from the models. You can create workflows that could be the first step of creating a digital process of reviewal and approval but also of the change uh, process potentially. It will also bring some security in terms of backup and authorization, who is allowed to see what. Then what? When we got all of this information within the system and when we are starting to get control of this data and then structure of it, we can start to move into what we call PLM. And uh, one of the first steps in that is perhaps in creating bill of materials. We already have a bill of material from, from the CAD site, uh, but here we can create articles uh, that will bind information together. So apart from the actual geometry that we get from, for instance, a CAD model, uh, there are as we mentioned before, different types of CAD documents and um, Word documents that are describing this specific uh, component within a product. And we can tie all of these together to create a more holistic product definition. So data can be synced to these articles from several sources. It could be CAD parameters that we already have, within the system. For, for instance, you set material within your CAD environment that could be presented uh, on these articles as well. It could be other types of master data like ERP or MES information that you want to uh, be able to see and view as you overlook your product uh, definition. You could uh, add in different types of external sources, very common and a lot of discussions that we have during the last six months have been material compliance databases that you can provide information um, about certain types of articles in your product. Are, they, are you able to sell this on uh, the European, the American market um, on the REACH and RUAS, for instance? With this, you also get the synchronized 3D visualization from your CAD system. And uh, so we, you will always have a, a, a visual aspect to this uh, bill of material. And once you have this bill of material in place, you can start creating different ones. You can have one for engineering, but manufacturing wants to view this in a different way. Perhaps you have a service organization that also wants to overlook a product definition, but in a 
totally different way. We will only want to see the, uh, the parts that we actually do service and the spare parts that we have within, a, um, within our products. Once you get these in place, you can also start working with, for instance, configuration management as an example, uh, breaking this into more of an overpopulated structure that you can uh, create a, a configuration platform on top of, uh, creating different types of products from, from the same bill of material. So what I'm trying to reach at here is that a, a PLM environment today is so much more than it was a few years back. This is an example of different areas that we discuss on a daily basis with our customers and that we can support with our PLM solutions. But in our experience, the customer with the most successful digital transformation journeys are the ones that has threaded softly they have moved with small but dedicated steps towards their goals, and this has gained them a deeper knowledge of how their own companies act and work, and the opportunities that digital tools has to offer. These newly gained insights often cause the journey to change course, and it's easier to make changes to a set of small projects rather than a very large one. So by treading softly and including people during that process, there is also a better chance of the employees embracing these new ways of working. So how would you start? Uh, my advice is to log off uh, what we call the sneaker net. Any digitalization journey will require you to have control over your data. Eliminating siloed informations will improve not only the quality of your data, but also your products and services. It will also lower the time spent on non-value adding activities and secure information. This results not only in a quick return of investment, but also a great start for your digital transformation journey. So with that said, uh, I wanna thank you for taking your time today and I hope this at least sparked some inspiration or some uh, interest in PDM and what is possible here. Uh, and I'm going to ask you, Roger, if we uh, do we have any questions in the chat or if not so, feel free to write anything that you may wonder. One of the questions was actually who should we contact? So I think you answered that one brilliantly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope so. You're more than welcome to reach out to me or to uh, Roger um, if you have any in interest in this. And uh, if you want to know more, as um, Roger mentioned, there is um, an upcoming webinar, uh, Winchell is your friend, but we also have some uh, all the ones that are available on our homepage where you can deep dive in, into different sections of what we talked about today. I could actually show that uh, page uh, up here. So on uh, pdsvision.com, so you come to the first page, you go to ongoing. Uh, so upcoming events are under events and on demand webinars where you actually can find all almost all of the webinars that we kept uh, previously which are on uh, different topics so you can do anything from uh, service and aftermarket to creo deep dives so it's a well of information that's available for you out there i shouldn't say that in here from my perspective but besides from that, I'd also like to thank you for uh, attending the webinar and uh, thank you, Niels. And uh, we'll uh, see you. There might be another question coming in here. Bear with me a second. So we got a question if we're sending this presentation out. We can definitely do that. So uh, absolutely, uh, we'll take care of that. And uh, thank you very much for attending. And we'll see you soon in a webinar or at uh, your site or at our site. Take care.